Armando Hasurungan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. In this video, we're going to look at uh, endocrinology, calcium and phosphate regulation. So the hormones essentially involved in uh, regulating calcium and phosphate levels in the blood. And there are three important hormones involved. These are vitamin D, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin. So like all endocrine systems, we should look at what glands and what tissues are involved. So here I'm drawing the brain where we have the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. But surprisingly enough, we won't really look at these in this video. We will, however, look at this gland here called the thyroid gland, which is situated on our throat. This is a dorsal view of the thyroid gland. So it's the view from the back. And at the back of the thyroid gland, we can find uh, four glands, additional glands, which are different, called the parathyroid glands. And we have four of these on the dorsal side of the thyroid gland. Other important uh, organs and stuff that we will uh, talk about in this video include the bone, because this is where calcium and phosphate um, can be found, the minerals. And actually most of the calcium is, 99% is stored in the bone. And we also will talk about the kidneys, the gut, the GIT, the liver, as well as the skin. So let us first, the hormone that we'll firstly concentrate on is parathyroid hormone. But before that, we have to see what the significance of calcium and phosphate is in our body. So we have to regulate calcium and phosphate levels because, for one, calcium is important for uh, muscle contraction, uh, nerve conduction, um, and phosphate is important for other biochemical processes as well as, um, you know, energy. So now let's look at the first hormone. Uh, which is parathyroid hormone. So parathyroid hormone is released uh, when we have a decrease in plasma calcium levels. So a decrease in plasma calcium levels will stimulate the parathyroid gland to release a hormone called parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone targets a few things. Firstly, it targets the bone. It stimulates the bone to... Um, sort of res to break down its minerals so that we so calcium and phosphate can enter the plasma therefore it increases calcium and phosphate levels in the plasma the parathyroid hormone also targets the kidneys it targets the an enzyme in the kidneys called 1 alpha hydroxylase 1 alpha hydroxylase's main function is to activate vitamin d so what it does is it converts a chemical to 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 also known as calcidiol, to 1,2,5-dihydroxyvitamin D3, uh, which is calcitriol. So calcitriol is the active form of vitamin D. Calcitriol then targets a few things. Firstly, it stimulates the bone as well somehow, and it to break it down so that we can increase the minerals, calcium, and phosphate in the blood. Calcitriol also has a negative feedback on the parathyroid gland, so it inhibits it. Because if we have so much calcitriol, uh, we don't need that much parathyroid hormone anymore. And then calcitriol also targets the GIT. It stimulates the GIT to increase calcium and phosphate um, absorption. Calcitriol also targets the kidneys itself. So if we zoom into the functional units of the kidneys, these are the nephrons. Here I am drawing one nephron. The nephron is made up of the head, the proximal convoluted tubules, PCT, loop of Henle, LOH, distal convoluted tubule, DCT, and collecting ducts, CD. So calcitriol actually targets the proximal convoluted tubules here to stimulate the reabsorption of calcium, thus increasing plasma calcium levels. In this diagram, in the nephron, the parathyroid hormone also has an effect, but it has an effect on the distal convoluted tubules. It stimulates the cells in the distal convoluted tubules to reabsorb calcium as well, thereby increasing plasma calcium levels. So now, I hope that all made sense. Now let's go back to calcidiol and calcitriol, calcitriol being the active form of vitamin D. But where do these things come from? Well, actually, it, it actually, the 25-hydroxyvitamin D3, or calcidiol, comes from the liver. 
but the whole process actually originates in the skin. In the skin, we have a chemical just there, uh, a cholesterol there known as 7-D-hydroxycholesterol. And when the sun, the sun's UV rays hits this, it actually converts 7-D-hydroxycholesterol to vitamin D3, cholecalciferol. And this all occurs in the skin. Cholecalciferol then travels to the liver, where it gets converted by the liver enzymes to 25-hydroxyvitamin D3, or calcidiol. And then this calcidiol is what moves into the kidneys, and in the kidneys, calcidiol, as we know, gets converted by 1-alpha-hydroxylase. So I hope that all made sense. So essentially, when we look back at the three important hormones, vitamin D, its main goal is to increase plasma calcium levels. Parathyroid hormone, its main goal is to increase calcium uh, plasma levels as well. Now, whereas calcitonin does the opposite, it will aim to decrease plasma calcium levels. So we can say that if there is, for example, an increase in plasma calcium levels, this will stimulate the thyroid gland and it will stimulate the thyroid gland to produce calcitonin. Calcitonin essentially has the opposite effect of parathyroid hormone. So calcitonin's goal is to decrease plasma calcium levels when we have an increase of it. But I think calcitonin does not have that big of a role, much of a role in the human body as compared, uh, it does have a role, but not as significant as parathyroid hormone. So I hope you understood the main goal, the main roles of the three important hormones in calcium and phosphate regulation. But it's now it is important to look into a bit more detail at how parathyroid hormone elicits its effects on the bone. Because the bone, as we as I mentioned earlier, is the main reservoir for calcium, the minerals. So the bone are made up of two main cells that we will talk about. These are osteoblasts, which build bone, and these are osteoclasts, which break down bone. However, this osteoclast is not activated yet. It's so we call it a pre-osteoclast. And it is the active osteoclast that will re-resorb bone. So it will break down bone, uh, which will allow calcium and phosphate to be released in the blood. So here I'm drawing a bone again, a simplified diagram. Um, and on the outside we have the hard bone, also known as a compact bone, where we where it contain, you know, where we can find collagen as well as minerals. And this is what bone is made up of essentially. And then on the inner part we have soft bone. But in this case, I think it's just just good to know that it's just bone. Okay. So now let's go back to the osteoblast. And because osteoblasts, see, have the main role in activating these osteoclasts, even though they have opposite roles. So on osteoblasts, we have a receptor, the parathyroid hormone receptor. So when parathyroid hormone comes along, it will bind onto this receptor, and it will cause, and it will have three effects on the osteoblast. Firstly, it will cause osteoblasts to proliferate. Second, it will, it will um, stimulate the expression of rank ligand on the osteoblast. Thirdly, the parathyroid hormone will cause uh, osteoblasts to stop making um, osteoprotegerin. Now, osteoprotegerin, also known as OPG, normally inhibits basically the activity of rank ligand binding onto another receptor. So basically, parathyroid hormone inhibits this process. So it doesn't want OPG to have an effect. Now, on pre-osteoclast, the pre-osteoclast expresses a receptor called the rank receptor. So essentially what happens is the rank ligand being expressed on osteoblast will bind onto the rank on the pre-osteoclast. And when this occurs, and when it's not inhibited by OPG, um, the rank ligand rank complex will cause the osteoclast to proliferate and differentiate. There's another chemical uh, which has a, uh, sort of stimulates this whole process as well, where on the osteoclast we have a receptor uh, CFMS, and uh, the chemical that I'm talking about is macrophage colony, co colony stimulating factor, or MCSF. And when MCSF binds onto this receptor, it will stimulate the osteoclast to proliferate, and to differentiate. So if either of these things occur, 
the pre-osteoclast will then become an active osteoclast and it will become multinucleated. It'll be, osteoclasts are actually big things. It's much bigger than osteoblasts. And it is a type of macrophage. That's why macrophage coronary stimulating factor. So here we have osteoclasts, which will release some form of acid. And when it releases acid, it will basically eat away on the bone. And this will cause bone resorption. So it will allow the minerals to leave out of the bone. And these minerals that I'm talking about are calcium and phosphate. So it's essentially parathyroid hormone stimulates this whole process, thereby allowing osteoclasts to become activated and to basically release calcium and phosphate from the bone by eating it up. And just to recap, osteoblasts have the opposite effect in that they, their main goal is to build bone. So they are the ones that release collagen as well as some minerals. So I hope you enjoyed this video on endocrinology, calcium and phosphate regulation. We looked at three main hormones, vitamin D, active form, calcitriol, parathyroid hormone, as well as cal calcitonin. Thank you for watching.